Thank you very much. I'm going to talk about people. I'm going to tell you a story about an experiment that happened on board a nuclear submarine in organizational design, where he created an organization to maximize the engagement, the passion, and the thinking of everybody on the team. Now, you may be thinking, a nuclear submarine, that's kind of an unlikely place to run an experiment in organizational design, and I would agree with you. It's isolated from the rest of the world. It's contained. No one can get more than 200 feet away from the boss. I can go to someone's bed, we call it a rack, and actually wake them up. And it's very risk adverse. If an investor talks about getting the risk wrong, they talk about losing money. When we get the risk wrong, we die. You can't control people, but this is the image I suggest you have when it comes to the most important thing that's in your company, which is the creativity, the passion, and the thinking of your people. You can't order people to do those things. And so it might as well be like you can't see them and, they ha and you have to set, create an environment where they can just do what they need to do without being told. Now I ask you, can you actually direct somebody's thoughts? Has anyone seen it? I have. Star Wars 1, Obi-Wan Kenobi comes out. <laughs> These are not the... Right? There's no Obi-Wan Kenobis in here. You can't direct people's thoughts. And yet, this is the structure that we had, and this is what I believed in in terms of leadership. And although this may seem a bit archaic to you, when I visit companies now, this cultural image of leadership runs deep in the blood and the DNA of the leaders of many of our companies. Because of that, we got problems. Tr organizational trust is at the lowest point. Employee engagement is at the lowest point. And heads up, for you techies, oh, it's so much better in the tech world. Eh, it's actually worse. This just came out uh, in this week's Economist. 19%, only 19% are happy with their jobs. 17% feel valued at work. 28%, only 28% even understand what their company's vision is. And it's because, not because we're not doing that leadership that I told you about wrong, it's because it's the wrong kind of leadership. Because leaders don't add stress to their teams, they make it safe. The more cognitive the task is, the more complicated the task is, and the more creative you need your team to be, the safer you need to make them feel. We spend a lot of time focusing on language. Here we are. Uh, fighting fires on board the submarine. We have some fire exits here on, on board a submarine. You know how many fire exits the submarine has? <laughs> Zero. If you don't put the fire out, you die. We call that motivation. <laughs> so, and we weren't really very good. We would, we would train on this. We weren't very good. And we'd sit in the debrief afterwards and we'd say, hey, how'd it go? What happened? And I heard a lot of they. They did this, they did that, they didn't pressurize the hose. Finally, I got upset and said, there's no they on Santa Fe. It rhymed, so they remembered it. I said, we're gonna use the word we from now on. Now, we had a lot of they's, right? Engineering was they to ops, supply was they to everybody. The officers were they to the enlisted guys, chiefs were they to the, you know, I was, of course, the biggest they of all. Why are you doing that? They told me. Well, who do you mean? Well, uh, you. <laughs> anyway, something really interesting happened. The engineer came up to me the very next day and he says, hey, Captain, bad news. Pump repair will be delayed because they, they ordered, he wants to say they, the supply department, ordered the wrong part. But he can't say they, so he has to say, we ordered the wrong part. <laughs> he's like, come on. He just walks away. That's all. He's just like, yeah, never mind. <laughs> There's no blame. There's no blame. Right? When we were inspected, one of the senior officers said, this, this team has the most powerful culture of teamwork I have ever seen. And I said, no, no, no. We don't have a culture. What we have is a rule that we use the word we. But what had happened is by saying we, we rewired our brains. We reconnected our brains in a different way so that we started thinking of each other as we. You use the word we for our team. And if you want to understand where the boundaries are in your organization, just ask people to, hey, tell me about these guys. 
Oh, we're, we're in marketing. What about them? Oh, they're in the sales. And I usually say HR, but. <laughs> HR is very powerful, by the way. They, have, they write the code for the organization's culture. Yeah, they're in sale. Like, and, as soon as you, and I call that the we-they boundary. And you gotta expand the we. For us, it was great. I got awards, I got promoted. Uh, people would call me and tell me how great I was, blah, blah, blah. But it wasn't really about that for me. And the reason it took me 10 years to write the book is because it took me 10 years to figure out what we really did. What we really had done is we had created leaders. We created more leaders on that submarine than any other submarine by a factor of three and a half. And so as officer after officer after officer was selected to promote, to, to command his own ship over the next 10 years. And that to me is what it was about. It wasn't success, it was significance. And the good news is, for you here in Switzerland, because of your geography, there's a political tradition. There's a little bit of skepticism about centralized control. And there's a tradition of balancing control to the outlying cantons versus the central government. And so I'm optimistic about you guys in the ability to give control in your companies. Thank you very much.